get to the Joint Chiefs. That's how, that's how this missile found its target. It was unbelievable. So we get in the car, we fly to, you know, go to the airport, go to D.C., thank you, end up at the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Now, you talk about having to try to exude confidence in front of those guys. I mean, that's, that's a big deal, okay? And I thought we did fairly well at that, okay? And I'm not doing that to blow any particular horn here, but I'm doing that to say when you get in front of people, it doesn't matter if they are four-star generals or, or a lady who owns a bakery and you're trying to sell flour. It doesn't matter. You have to portray the fact that you are the best flour seller as much as you're the best chaos theoretician, that's even a word, that there is out there. Adopt that attitude. Number two. Let me change my list. Cojones, right? I think that begins with a C. I don't know. I, I tried to spell check and it kept coming up as not a word, but let's pretend it's, you spelled with a C. <laughs> when you decide to do this, you're going to be stepping outside your comfort zone, really far outside your comfort zone. In a lot of cases, you're going to step outside your personal comfort space because you're going to have to kind of put yourself out there. You're going to have to acquire skills that you don't think that you have. You're going to have to grab on and, la and, and acquire new skills pretty quick to be successful, right? It takes cojones to do that. It really does. You have to have that going in. If you're a, if you're a shrieking violet or a wallflower, for, don't, don't even bother because you are going to get, you're going to get hammered and that's quite, and that's, that's the word. You're, you're going to go out there thinking stuff, and you're going to, you're going to present to somebody, and you're, and you're just going to get, bam, you're going to get, no, you're going to get knocked on your can. You're going to have to get right back up, get back on the phone, get back on the computer, get back wherever you got back to, and do it again. And you're going to have to keep doing it, and keep doing it, and keep doing it. And you can't let those things, well, that probably, and you can't let those things knock you down. But it takes a certain amount of cojones to do that. So if you have not noticed that in your, in your life so far, that's a skill that you might want to evaluate and see if you really have that. If you can demonstrate that in your own mind where you've been that way, then you're probably halfway there already. But be prepared, because that's, de that's definitely going to happen. I have a buddy who, um, well, actually, let me, let me go, but before I go on to that, let me go back to, again, to a, personal, to a personal story about what I think is sort of cojone-like, if that's even a word. But a few years ago, I had an idea for um, electronic medical records. I was working as a cardiologist over at Alaska Heart Institute, and a patient came in one day, and he had on a, a lanyard around his neck, and he had a little zip drive, and he had all of his medical records on that thing. And I thought that was really cool. And this was kind of before electronic medical records really took off, um, and it was whilst people were still talking more about personal health records. Nowadays, personal health records really haven't picked up as much, but EMRs have totally taken off. And we, we're not going to go into all that today, but, but that was the sort of, I thought, wow, this personal health record thing is a great idea. So to make a long story short, I came up with this idea in my head, and I thought, who in the world might need something like this? And, that, and I came up with some different companies you know, around town that I thought might be potential candidates for looking at stuff like this to help leverage some of their other products and services. So one day I was watching TV, and I saw a commercial for ACS, you know, Alaska Communications Company. And I remember her, the CEO was on there. Um, her name was Leanne Pelletier at the time, and she was walking a, a dog. And the part, of the part of the commercial showed her petting a dog, and I thought to myself, that must be a nice lady. If she's petting a dog on TV, she's got to be nice. I remember thinking this. How ridiculous is this? So I, I looked, in the, looked on the computer, found ACS's um, number, and I called up, and I got her secretary, and I got, her, I got Leanne Pelletier, the CEO's email address, and I wrote this. I typed up this letter. You know, I said, this is my idea, yada, yada. And I did the same thing for a couple guys, GCI and a few other people. Well, about two hours later, I get, a, I get an email back from Leanne herself saying, Mark, I think your idea is great. Come see me next week. Okay. So next week I went in there and met with her and I pitched my idea to her and, and uh, she's like, this is great, but we're not quite ready yet. So over the ensuing couple of months, I'd go back there, you know, a couple of times here and there over the course of the year, a couple of times. She ended up leaving the company. Her successor, a gentleman named Anad Vatapali came in, who's the current CEO. I became buddies with him. Back and forth, talk this and that. And then all of a sudden, about four or five months ago, they offered me an opportunity to do some consulting with them. Okay. And it was at that point that I had to make a decision whether or not I wanted to continue doing cardiology or to launch a business around this, this consulting idea. Now, I think the cojone part of this, there's several cojone parts here. I think the cojone part is sending out an email where you think, this is really silly. You're sending an email to somebody you don't even know about an idea you don't even know makes any sense. I mean, again, try not to blow my own horn here, but, you know, whatever. But, but you, you will have your equal opportunities to blow your horns because you're going to have to do the exact same thing when you decide that you're going to be starting a company too. 
So put yourself out there. Don't be afraid not to do that because you never know where it's going to go. If I hadn't sent that email to her, it was an ultimate cold call. If I had done that, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. I wouldn't have started my consulting company. I wouldn't be doing you know, the things I'm doing now. It started because of that. So you never know where we're going to go, but you have to have the cojones to go off and do it the first time. Moving right along. Commitment, okay? At some point in your life, you have to put your money where your mouth is, okay? I remember for years, my own, for the last four or five years, I thought to myself, I really want to do this, I really want to do this, I really want to do this. But I kept getting bogged down in some of those three things that I mentioned to you at the beginning. I wasn't committed. And I, then I thought, well, maybe I can do this part time. Maybe I can do some of this and I can do some of that. Well, you can't do some of this and some of that. You have to do either this or you have to do that. You can't do both. You can't serve two masters. So if you're going to go off and start a business, you need to go off and start a business. Now, that's not to say that you just start, you just quit whatever you're doing today and just go do it. No. You use some time to prepare, you use some time to acquire skills, you use some time to get some confidence and do some things while you're working. But when you decide that you want to be an entrepreneur and you want to have a business, you have, that's when you've got to pull the trigger and say, I'm going to do this. And if you look at, I was reading a thing about um, Mark Cuban, I, I think he's, oh, I forget which company he started, I mean, Cisco or one of those, I don't know who it was, but he was saying, if you have a plan B in your head, then you're not committed. That's a little unrealistic, but you know what? I mean, what was it, Cortez, the explorer, when he came to the New World, they burned all their ships, right? So they'd be motivated to stay. I'm not saying you should burn your house down, all right? But, but when you decide that you want, to run a, you want to jump off and start a business, you have to be committed and do it. And don't let anybody knock you off course. Don't do it part-time. Do it, all right? If in the end you fail, hey, you know what? You fail. That's, that's the way it goes. One of my buddies in town here owns a TechMate, which is a large um, IT company in town. His name is Sean. Sean started TechMate about 12 years ago or so when he was in his early to mid-20s. And he told me, his wife was pregnant, he had a couple of kids. You know, he said, I had to do this. There was no option. I, I mean, there was no, other there was no other option. I was not going to fail, period. He borrowed some money from his family. He had some of his savings, and he did it. Now he's got, you know, X number of millions in sales, 60-something people. He was bought out. You know, half his company was bought out by a large telecom company here. He's doing great. He's 35 years old. But he said at the very beginning, he said, I gave myself no out. It had to be, I had to be successful. There was no option. And that's the mindset you need to attain if you're going to do this. If you're thinking to yourself, well, I can try this for a few months. If it doesn't work, I'm going to give it up. And I can always go back to working, you know, you know at the department store or whatever. Uh-uh. You've got to be all in. The next thing is capability, all right? Capability. You, you have to be realistic with yourself, too, and to say that you do have some kind of a skill that people are going to want to buy or something. You have to have something. So if you, if you go out there with absolutely nothing, well, you're probably going to have a little bit of a hard time. So you have to be capable. You have to have a realistic assessment or you have to go through a realistic assessment of your skill set to determine whether or not you are capable. And at this point, it might be one of those where it's a good opportunity or it's a good time to engage the help of others. Ask friends for opinion. Ask your professors. Ask your boss. Ask people your confidants. Do you really think I have the skill set to do this? Because in your mind, you should think that you do, but sometimes it's also, too, nice to get you know, external verification of that as well. You know, if, you want to be, um, if you want to start your own medical practice, it's probably a good idea to have an MD after your name. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, so, and I do that to be funny in part, but if you're going to go off and do something, you kind of need to have done it. Or at least be able to convince people that you're really good at what you're claiming that you're able to do. One of the things that I've always found was, <coughs> well, let me, let me rephrase that a little bit. When I started this current entrepreneurial thought process in my head a few years ago, I kind of went through some of what I'm telling you, some personal introspection, as it were, to think, do I really have what it takes to do this also? Um, getting up in front of people always used to terrify me. It doesn't really anymore. Maybe it should, but it doesn't really anymore. But a couple of years ago, um, I thought to myself, you know, I'm getting kind of, I wonder if I'm getting complacent. You know, back when I was in my 20s, I could go talk to the Joint Chiefs of Staff all day long, but, you know, here I am, you know, a little older now. I've been, I got a little money in the bank. I've been kind of successful. I've been, life's a lot easier than it was. So I really, you still have the fire, you know. So decided to run for Senate, ran for the Senate up here, State Senate. And I'm not saying you should all run for the Senate, but in my own, in my own head, putting myself out there to run for public office gave me the feeling that if I can do that, well, maybe I still got a little bit of this. Maybe I can, I know I'm tired and it's been after work, but now I have to walk through that neighborhood and knock on doors all day. And I have to let people like laugh at me or take my stuff and throw it away or, or you know, yell and scream or write me nasty things on Facebook. I mean, I, I, if I can still do that, 
then maybe I, have the, maybe I can do what I think I'm going to do. So take a look at that yourself, okay? Before you go out there, make a, make a true assessment. Do you have what it takes to do it? And then go do it. The next one is communication, all right? You have to talk to everybody. You have to network with everybody. Everybody is an important contact, everybody. Don't ever think that somebody is not important because they can, they might not be important now, but my God, they could be important. And it's crazy how many people um, that I have spoken with over the last couple of years have now turned out to be important in my life from a business standpoint, okay? There are, there are people that work in hospitals. There are people that work in businesses. There's contacts I made over the internet on LinkedIn that are now starting to bubble up now that I need them, now that I, now that I have some ideas. I can bounce it off this guy. I can bounce it off that guy. A good case in point from my personal experience is a couple of years ago, I um, was looking to potentially partner up with somebody to do some medical group consulting work. I didn't have the first idea who to contact for this. I didn't, I didn't know a medical consultant from a pile of, you know, whatever. I didn't, I didn't know anybody. So I, you know, I found a recruiter online, you know, one of those people that recruits for professional jobs, and I just found her, I sent her an email, hey, this is what I'm looking for, and she was very nice. She sent me back the name of some guy in Idaho. His name was Jim. Jim was, he was a hospital CFO. He had an MBA and a law degree, and he was going off on his own starting a company at that time. And she goes, you should talk to Jim. So I, I didn't know Jim from Adam either, but I called Jim up. I said, hey, Jim, I'm you know, Mark, blah, 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 this and that. So we talked for a while. He didn't need my services, or, or he, didn't, you know, he didn't think there was any synergy. Okay, fine, no problem. But I kept in contact with him over the last couple of years. And just recently, I, went, I got in contact with him again. And as of Sunday, I'm going down to Boise to talk to him about doing some partnership work because he has some large medical group um, contracts that he could potentially use some of the things that I had pitched to him a couple of years ago. Now, I could have very easily have said, well, gee whiz, Jim, you don't need me three years ago. I'm just going to delete you out of my thing. But I didn't do that. And you shouldn't do that either. You should find your contact base and you should continually ping them to make sure that they remember who you are. Because people are busy. They're not going to remember who you are unless you remind them who you are. So what you do is you go through and you look at your contact list. You find people that you think you might want to network with because they may have some value to the business that you're thinking of doing. And you introduce yourself or you reintroduce yourself or you offer to have with them. Or you come up with some cockamamie idea and write up a little data sheet or something and send it to them. And then you send them a note saying, hey, did you get my cockamamie data sheet? What do you think of that? You want to go have coffee and talk about it? How about if I call you on the phone? And you make sure that you do this all the time. I mean, not all the time, all the time, but I mean on a regular scheduled basis all the time so that you keep doing it. Because when you get complacent and when you stop, when you stop networking, stop communicating, you, you, you're, you're kicking yourself in the rear end about getting things done, okay? So don't ever underestimate the importance of networking, all right? A couple more here quick. Um, you got to be carefree, okay? You can't get too wrapped around the axle, all right? You don't know where this is going to go. And you have to be comfortable in the fact that you might be successful, okay? Not a bad thing. But, you know, you ever, every once in a while you hear about, oh, that guy, uh, you know, my uncle Jim, you know, he was, he was uh, afraid to be successful. He just, he ran, you know, he got some, some good things came, but he, was, he got so nervous that he just gave them away and, and didn't capitalize on that. You have to be carefree. You have to say, you know, I don't know where this boat's going to take me, but I think it's going to be pretty fun. Now, the flip side of that is, of course, the boat could sink, right? But even if it sinks, you know, you're going to learn something from the sinking, all right? You're going to learn how to swim. But no, I'm, there is, there is there's education even in failure, okay? There's education in failure. But there's also an education in success. You have to be able to deal with that. But the fun part of going off on a life like this is you don't know what's out there. So I'll tell you a funny story. I was down in Las Vegas with the family, I don't know, a couple years ago, and I went to take a steam bath, right? It was really cool, big hotel. So I walk into the, to the guy's steam bath thing, and I open the door, and it is just a wall of steam. I've never seen anything like it. You go to the Alaska Club, you can see 10 guys in there. You, you open the door in here, steam. And I walked in there, and I had the towel on. I'm walking around, walking around like this. I'm like, where the hell is it? You know, whatever. And I kept walking, walking. I think, what am I, in the Astrodome? Where is it? You know? And then sure enough, it, it got unsteamy, and there's like an amphitheater. There's almost as many people in that steam room as is in here. It was like a four or five level steam shower, and there's guys everywhere in there. But I couldn't see that when I walked in the door. When I walked in the door, it was all fuzzy, cloudy steam. I had no clue where I was going. Okay, it was like an trip and fall on somebody. But the fact of the matter is, is you now are entering that steam room, all right? And you might not be able to see what's at the other end of that steam room. 
Another story is, which I thought was pretty cool, is I had a buddy a long time ago when I was selling for Hewlett Packard. His name was Tim. And Tim and I were sales reps at HP. And I had lost touch with him over the years. I didn't know what happened to Tim. But I remember Tim and I were, were both pretty good sales guys. He was, he was ranked a little higher than I was. But, you know, we went our separate ways. I did this, he did that. And I lost touch with Tim. But not too long ago, I was talking to my old boss at HP, and he mentioned uh, Tim Wackel. He goes, hey, you, heard what, you heard from Wackel lately? And I said, uh, no, I haven't thought of him in a decade. What's he doing? He goes, he is one of the number one sales trainers in the country now. Okay? I'm like, get out. He's, oh, he was. He was. So he lives in Dallas. So I, you know, I called him up, looked on the internet, sure enough, he's got his website, and I called him up. We started talking for a while, and I said, Tim, what the hell, you know? He goes, um, well, I was working for a company, got tired of the BS. He goes, I went to work for some small venture, and I thought, I want to do something completely different. I'm going to be a sales trainer and a coach, sales coach. I said, have you ever done this before? Do you have a training for this? And I shouldn't tell you the answer to this because it goes against what I've already told you, but he's like, no, I had no, I had no training in that whatsoever except from the fact that he had the cojones, which were as big as you know what, and he had... And he had the belief in himself and the confidence that he could do this. And he went out there and he made himself a sales trader. And he's told me, he goes, he got one gig. One gig led to two. Two led to four. Four led to eight. Now he gets $8,000 a day for doing sales training. Okay. Never took any courses in that. But he just went off and did it. So, and he even told me, he's like, Mark, I had no idea where this was going to go. He goes, I thought probably I would do this for a couple of years. I'll give myself a year or so. If it doesn't work, I'll go back and get a job. Or if it does work, maybe I'll get in with a good company and I'll end up being their sales manager or something. But he never in his whole life ever dreamed that he'd be as successful as he was now. Almost like the Dan Brown syndrome, except with Tim. Okay? But the point is, he didn't stress it. He said, hey, I'm going to enjoy the ride, and off I go. One of the things I noticed, too, is, and it's sort of related to that, is being an entrepreneur, you know, it's, it's, it's a very kind of a, a sinusoidal um, or rocky road, I guess, as you, might, uh, as you might imagine. What I didn't realize is how the emotional whipsaw can change so quickly. I mean, I, I, you know, people say, well, last year was bad. I mean, I remember the winter was sucked, but the spring was great. So, you know, people are, people are comfortable talking about emotional ups and downs over the course of a long period of time, but I'm talking about emotional ups and downs that are, that are dramatic, even in, even in a conversation. I was talking to a guy the other day, I was having lunch with him, and I remember I, I pitched him one of my ideas and he didn't like it, he thought it was, he thought it was stupid, and my, my mood went pew. And then a couple minutes later in the conversation, he said something and my mood went pew. It was, it was going like this, just in the middle of a conversation, I was happy, sad, happy, sad, happy, sad, and I thought, this is ridiculous, I can't go out.